Well troops, it's another day on the River Earn, and as you can probably tell by the audio, there's more blowing going on than what there is in an Amsterdam whorehouse. It's just a bit windy. I'm having the fish. Having to fish with the rod up. Normally I fish with that rod rest and the rod tip tied it down to the surface, but at the minute you want to keep as much line out of the water as possible. Simply because the, the toe going that way uh, is horrendous. I'm using the uh, the newer Preston Innovation ones. They are the, the bigger feeder versions. A bit better. They are the, uh, they're meant to be for baiting up. Well, they're not for baiting up. I'm using these to feed aggressively. I'm using the, uh, the biggest one that I could buy in the shop at the minute. <laughs> has a lot of colour in it at the minute. Oh, mainly because we had a monsoon yesterday. And if that's the size of fish I'm going to catch all day, then I'll be a happy angler. Oh, let me show you this feeder. It is the 2.6 ounce Preston mid them for baiting up. These are just about holding the bottom and I'm not even fishing in the main flow. I'm only fishing in the slack and even then I'm still struggling to hold the bottom. So that's fish number three. Let's get it out and see if we can get another one. Catching fish. The river hopefully won't be as busy as last weekend. Where I had to kind of re spool shock meters and everything because some arsehole cut too close to the bank. I swear I could have touched them in, I could have poked them in the eye with the end of the rod. That's how close the boat was. the river's pulling through your tip will be bent over it will be arced over like that there when you get a bite it's not so much that there it's more so the tip just goes flat because the fish has hit the hit the bait dislodged the feeder and the tip springs up when it does that there you don't have to set the hooks you know although it's force of habit and muscle memory to set the hook you should really just wind but Bit like this. Mm, missed it. No 
messing about today. Size 10 hook, as many maggots as I can physically put on it, and I'm fishing in coloured water. The water is coming down very coloured, so I'm hoping the amount of ground bait, the liquids that I've put into it, is, uh, is hopefully going to bring the fish onto the feed. It's not been so bad, I've only been here maybe half an hour and I have four fish, so hopefully. Hopefully today turns out alright. Catch in bream, baby. Oh. They're good fun in the flow. Once they turn sideways on, there's not an awful lot you can do but hit and hold. <laughs> It's okay when it's uh, dry and you can see nice clouds coming in but I can also see what's coming behind them so I'll take this period of uh, not raining and, <laughs> and relatively uh, low wind Looking forward to next Saturday. Next Saturday, it's a private lake. The guy's going to pre bid it for us. There we go, that's a bit better. So, looking forward to that. Might catch some decent bream, might catch some nice tench. I just didn't want to stop. Many maggots as physically I could fit on a size 10 hook. So let's get some more on and get it back out there. self-respect and skimmer could refuse that. Let's put some corn in the feeder. Let's put some casting in the feeder. Unfortunately, it's uh, it's a big 75 gram feeder just to hold the bottom, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Not fishing very far out. Only fishing kind of to the edge of the, uh, the slack water here. The river 
comes around, comes around, there's a little island in front of you there. There's like a white post and there's a little island where the river breaks off into two bits. Two bits go around a place called Cleanish Island. Well, it kind of the river comes around, so the, the faster water and this part of the river is on the far side. You just have to, well it's a series of casting with a two ounce lead and when you start to get to the point where the lead's not getting dragged across the bottom that's the place where you put your clip and then you just sit and wait unfortunately it's not the uh, fastest game in the world but uh, okay now we're going to get rained on again here Problem with this type of fishing, you get a wild creak in your neck after the whole day because you're sitting looking up at the sky. Like I've said earlier, the rod tip, again I'm not sure how much of this you're going to catch. You should even see in the rod tip. Rod tip's bent over. When it springs the gut there, it means that the fish has hit the maggots and it's moved the feeder. Or it means that a big lump of grass or something that's been floating down the river smashed you up. Got to go home tonight and got to tie 90 hook lengths. I hate tying hook lengths. So I'm rapidly running out of hook lengths. That's the hook length material I'm using at the minute, just to get past the zebra mussels and the snags. That's 0.30 millimeters. That, that breaks at over 10 pounds, believe it or not, very fine it is. And I had a booby with my worm chopping scissors. The friggin' wind blew them off the side of the table and into the fucking river. So that sucks. Although I haven't really introduced any chop for him today. I've just been fishing with maggots on the hook. Right there I'm feeling, I'm definitely feeling rain again here.
weekend in August by the way. This is Northern Ireland summer. It just means that the rain gets a bit warmer. I got asked in one of the videos why I use a black ground bit. Uh, no, it's not because I used to be into used to be a goth or into heavy metal. Get my bite here. When you buy a ground bit that says like uh, like Sonya Bates Black Bream, it's not black like pitch black. It is like a grey colour. When you mix it. It goes into like that sort of colour. Now, on the bottom of the river, or the bottom of the lock, that kind of blends in. So the fish get comfortable feeding over the top of it, and they don't have to think about it. There is times where reds and yellows for ground baits work, and I have used reds and yellows before, but I'm fishing in a relatively shallow part of the river, and yes it has a bit of colour, But I find that the darker the ground bit on this section of the river and most of the urn tends to work a bit better. Now that works on the urn. But I could go to another place that I know that I fish that's landlocked from the urn and you'll waste your time throwing ground bit in. It just doesn't seem to do anything. Doesn't seem to attract fish. You have to start putting in uh, particles. Like lots of hemp, lots of corn, that sort of stuff works. But thanks to your ground bed feeder, waste your time. Well, hey, come on, you. Still racing through, still having to fish for this monstrosity of a feeder. Putting in corn and caster into the feeder. And then you just pack it down tight with ground bit. Just the bro just the crumb, just to kind of seal it in there. So you end up with that. Ground bit's closed it in. And it's ready to go. If the wind would just fuck off for about an hour, that'd be a happier guy. But, that's why I used our crown bit. A lot of it will come down to personal preference. I know guys that fish the urn in the matches, that use greens and stuff like that in their ground bit. Famous match angler Steve Ringer, he uses green uh, fish meal based ground bit no matter where he goes. I always found that fish meals didn't do that well for me on the urn. I think the fish meals are starting to come in. Historically, Irish fishery has never really got lots of fish meal. So, they got lots of stereotypical, what you would have thought as a ground bit, like a biscuit based ground bit. 
I mean, companies like Van de Ende, Census, and the newer companies like Dynamite Bits and Sonya Bits still sell an awful lot of biscuit based ground bits. They still sell an awful lot of them here as well. Again, it all comes down to your personal preference. What makes you what makes you more confident when you're fishing? Unfortunately, when you use a sweet-based ground bait in the summertime, you'll have wasps, and they're just a pain in the tits. The good thing about these Preston window feeders, you don't have to constantly chuck particles. You can just fill it up straight by round bit. And that's what I'm going to do now. So. absolutely ages since I've had to break out that there to that rod rest to fish on, on the urn. Absolutely ages. When I fished in places like Holland, you fished like that all the time. But that's because you were fishing massive big canals and massive big areas. When I fished in England, parts of the Severn and uh, the Trent, I only fished the Trent a couple of times. I was based for a long time up in, up in Lincolnshire in Coningsby, so the Warrisham was... Was it the Warrisham? I can't remember. But it's basically the river that runs just near enough Boston and Spalding and all those places like that. It used to be full of big bream. But it had the, uh, the issue of the fish punchers, the poachers. Yeah. <laughs> and I missed that, but how did I miss that bite? I'm sure you all see the Facebook and the social media sites. That'll be why I'm not catching anything. I'm sure you've all seen the Facebook pages where uh, poaching arseholes have, you know, fish in their bathtubs and stuff like that there. I used to work with a couple of Polish guys and they fucking hated them. They hated these people. And when you kind of said to them, you know, well, they're from your country. I know that that's what you do in your country, but it's not what you do here. 
and the Polish guys were saying the reason it's done in Poland is like a throwback to when they were uh, ruled by the communists like Russia and you can understand that because they'd have been fucking starving so you can understand anything they caught they ate I can understand that but we're in a country where you can go to like a pound shop or like a little or an Aldi and you can buy yourself a fucking dinner for less than a quid you can go and buy like to a pound shop and buy you know sandwiches for a pound we're not exactly you know living under communism well not yet anyway the Labour Party hasn't been voted in thankfully that's just a joke before I get any Owen Jones types out there having a go at me the Lithuanian guys the ones that I worked with were all good people they were all catch and release guys some of these guys are really really good match anglers and they fish the circuits when I fished for pike I've seen guys turn up and they've been you know they have the finest quality of gear that you could ever imagine these guys are as serious about fishing as you or I am so it's not every Eastern European that does this but predominantly they are from that community where everything they catch is killed I think we need to have a massive education drive throughout the whole of the UK throughout the Republic of Ireland as in advertisements on the TV as in famous faces saying so I mean we have a world of famous anglers you know, you have like your Robson Greens, your Jeremy Wades, you have your football stars that fish, you know, proper grade A celebs. I'm pretty sure they could uh, give five minutes of their time to speak in an advert saying, hold on guys, here we've practiced catch and release. If you want to go and knock everything on the head, go and fish in a stocky trout pond. Although it looks like apparently the uh, Brexit's going to make them all go back home. in August 2019. Now is about the time I start to transition to think more about pike angling. Around about the middle of next month I'll have the van swapped out from general course gear to pike gear. So this week, this uh, day away next weekend not my last hurrah but I'm hoping that I break the ton because I haven't done it this year and the match angler in me is annoyed with myself that I haven't caught over a hundred pound of fish nowhere close to it so by going to a, a special day ticket place where you have to get a reserve it the guy pre-feeds it for you I'm hoping that's the uh, 
that's my day to break the hundred pounds. What do you see? Happens at that. I'll go there and I'll blank. Ah well. You remember last week when a boat came and smashed up my tapered leader? Well, this time it wasn't a boat. It was the zebra mussels. The the line was literally, it's like somebody took sandpaper and rubbed the sandpaper over a hundred times and on the cast it just, well, I went like that, the cast, the feeder landed somewhere in front of me and I was like, okay. That's the zebra mussels what they do to your line on the urn. Ah, and there's no way to beat these little fuckers. That's what you need in front of you. That's the knot connecting braid to shock leader. This is the shock leader that I got back. So we're getting to the thick stuff now. We're getting to the really, really thick stuff now. We're getting to the stuff that you think, no way is a zebra muscle going to chew through that. Yeah, baby. Locker and zebra muscles aren't no joke. And if you run your fingers through that there, it looks like somebody's held it down and uh, ragged it with sandpaper. And it's the whole way up it. So I reckon that's the last, maybe, six feet that's on the bottom. As with all monos, you want to take them home with you, you don't want to leave them here. You don't want to let birds get tangled up in them. So, we're going to take them home and we're going to... If I can get untangled by the fucking thing, it'd be awesome. We're going to take it home and we're going to get it uh, disposed of. What a waste. Tapered leader destroyed. Brand new tapered leader. First day fishing with it. Gone. Thank you, zebra mussels. I don't think I'm going to stay much longer. I think honestly I'm going to call time on it because it's been a it's been a rough, tough day. It really has been rough and tough. It's about four o'clock, and already it's uh, just too much. Now, as I showed you in the last video as well, there'll be stuff on your tapered leader that you don't use, this is the excess. Make sure all that gets bagged up and thrown in the bin as well. When I go home, this is going on a fire, so no need to cut it up. But there you go, mono, and, and the remains of a caster. The world's most unlucky caster. Brutal day guys, absolutely brutal. Yeah, I'm gonna pack up. I'm gonna do the, what I've caught. I've only got about 13 fish today. Some decent ones, but the weather's just killed me, man. It's absolutely killed me. So I'll get cleared up. I'll show you what's in the net. We'll drive home, have a beer. Let's weigh what we've got, shall we? Or see what we've got. So 
little bit better. Now you can you can see me. Nice bream in here. Hold on. Not bad. Some other not bad ones. Time for beer. Time for beer. Last Saturday in August 2019. And as we're leaving, the sunshine is splitting the trees. You couldn't make it up, could you? I didn't think it did that bad fish wise, even though the wind was kind of trying to blow, it, blow me off the, uh, the platform. And I lost a pair of chopping scissors. And I lost the arm for my uh, table umbrella thing. So I'm hoping that Preston does a, a replacement or even a spare umbrella arm. <laughs> Fuck. You know, it's time to go home when the wind's blowing metal from the, from the shore into the water. But it's nice to be out. I just have to drive through on the skilling now. It's 20 to 6 on a Saturday. Oh well. Anyways. Before I bid you adieu, I will say thank you to everyone who has liked, subscribed, shared, left comments, all of that sort of stuff. You guys are awesome. Looking at the analytics, there's uh, people watching my video in America. Hello Americans. Apart from that, I'm looking forward to getting into pike fishing. Can I get a not not bored bored not the right word, but I am definitely itching for the temperature to drop and to get the pike fishing gear in the car and get out fishing in places where there's no humans. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Until next time, trips. Deadlines.